Silver friends, this is Jolie from Quicksilver Hair and today I want to go over my honest opinion and review of the Shark Flex Style Air Drying and Styling System. Quite a mouthful. <laughs> but anyway, here it is. This is the device. I have tried both versions of the Dyson Air Wrap, which this is the dupe for. So let's get into it and I'll share all of my thoughts on this device. I ordered a custom set. So we'll go over all the pieces here. I um, ordered just the pieces that I thought I would need. However, somehow I ended up with some extra pieces and I think it was just a matter of meeting the needs of the custom kit that I ordered. Um, so I ordered the paddle brush, which is like so. Um, and then it came with the round brush that's like the Revlon hot tool. Um, I have the diffuser and the two Coenda Effect curling wands, plus the nozzle. One of the things that drew me to this that I was most interested in is that you can turn this and turn it into a hair dryer. Um, I thought with the diffuser that I would enjoy using it in replacement for my hair dryer, diffuser, and then have all of these heat tools. If you don't know about it, it has a, you can raise and lower the diffuser teeth. I was disappointed by the size of this because I like a larger diffuser bowl for all of this length of hair. So in comparison, here is the Black Orchid. And you can see how much smaller it is in comparison side by side. Um, so that was very disappointing to me. However, I thought, I wonder if the black orchid fits on there. And lo and behold, it does. So it has these little knobs here or stops, if you will. And you can fit your own diffuser head on there. And the black orchid fits just fine. It doesn't need an adapter. So that was great. And I used it several times this way as a diffuser. My main issue with it is how hot this device gets. So right off the bat, it does not get my stamp of approval for fine silver hair in particular because the finer your hair is, the more propensity you have for heat damage. So if you have fine hair and you want this device, make sure you're using a heat rated heat protectant. Okay, <laughs> moving on to the paddle brush. I will be completely honest with you. I was not a fan of this at all. These teeth are very sharp. They're very stiff and the bristles are like a synthetic uh, nylon bristle and I had a ton of hair in the brush. I had a lot of breakage. I could tell right away that it was causing breakage and frizz which I, nope, not gonna use it. I'm just not gonna use it. I would love to see a paddle brush that is gentle on fine and made for fine hair. This is definitely not for fine hair. You've got to have really strong hair for this. On the same token, I did not use this one. It has the same bristles. Um, I wasn't really interested in using this anyways, so I have not used that one, but it was you know, pretty safe to say that it was gonna be the same as far as pulling and breaking the hair. Next, I tried this little dude. And while it is similar and works the same as the Dyson, I noticed one thing that I was like, what? <laughs> um, if you'll notice, I'm gonna point this right at you. See this ridge? As I was heat styling, this gets so hot that it was actually creating this pattern in my fine hair. So I would let it go and it would have this zigzag, which is why my hair is straight right now because I was trying to use it to show you what your hair could look like with this tool. And I ended up with these little marks and they were every, you know, they were the pattern wrapped around my hair. So I straightened my hair because I'm not a fan of that weird little zigzag pattern on my hair. That was not where I was headed with this device. One big issue for me, um, if you've watched any of my other heat tool reviews is grip issues. I have issues with my right hand from an injury in 2020 and it is very difficult for me to hold on to things and move my wrist around. So I have to have something that has a really good grip on it. This is very slick, very smooth. 
and it is five and three quarter inches around. So that's pretty big. I have big hands, but I mean, you know, that's a lot to hang on to with the tool on the end of it and move it through your hair. I do not remember the Dyson air wrap being that wide around the middle. Um, the other thing is because it's so slick, it's sliding out of your hand, right? A major issue I have, and I've watched several other reviews and everybody has commented on this. Here are the controls. They are flat, except for the on off button, okay? And they are down around the filter. So when you're styling your hair, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're usually mid barrel, right? And you want the controls sort of like a flute <laughs> where you can play the controls while you're using the device. In this case, I found that every time I wanted to change the device, I had to pull it away from my hair, look at the buttons and change the buttons. The cool shot is right here and it is very hard when you're styling to feel it. I literally, I've played with this for several months now and I can, I still had to stop and find the cool shot and hit it. Now, that's a problem with the Kawanda Effect barrels because you're supposed to use heat for 10 seconds and cool shot for 10 seconds and then let it go. And that's very difficult. You can't let it go and look for the cool shot at the same time. So I was finding myself trying to see it in the mirror. I just felt that this could have been much better designed. And I was actually thinking, you know, maybe there's some sort of hack. Maybe you can put something on there so you can feel those buttons. Um, I don't know. It, to me, is very troublesome. And then you don't want to hold it down here and control the buttons because you're blocking the filter. So, <laughs> as you can see, there's several things that were bothersome to me about it. And, you know, while there are some great tech things here, like I like that the cord spins, I love that they made this where you can turn it into a hairdryer. Um, I found some issues, especially with the heat. So let's go over that. I used my infrared thermometer to clock the heat on low, medium, and high. On low, it was reaching 150 to 160 degrees, which I find that's really high for low. I would consider that more of a medium setting. Medium was clocking 160 to 190, and high got up to 250 degrees, which is just too hot for a dryer in my opinion which also explains why it crimped my hair with the barrel. The other issue with these barrels is they are a one and a half inch diameter barrel, so they're really large. Um, I don't know, for the length of my hair, that just means that my hair is practically straight when I'm done. It doesn't actually offer any curl or wave to my hair, so that for me kind of null and voids this part. The other thing about these is the plastic on these tools, so like this particular tool, um, I played with this just to see how hot it was getting. I don't actually use this device, but the nozzle itself got up to 180 degrees and literally you could not touch it. I tested it uh, 30 minutes ago and it's still warm. This thing has still got some, I can still feel a little bit of heat in it, but it literally gets so hot you cannot with your bare hands take it off of the base to switch to your other tools. So I find that kind of odd. I guess you would have to use one of those gloves if you wanted to use it regularly. Overall, I think that that's way too hot for a hair dryer or an air styling tool. I think that the whole concept here is that we're trying to avoid using like a flat iron and it being too hot. But I feel like if it's too hot to your skin, like I found that with diffuser up against my scalp, it was hot against my scalp, which was my problem with the dryer. I didn't like the dryer because it got so very hot. I think the temperatures were quite similar. I have those listed on the website, which there will be a post in the description box below that is my heat styling post. I just keep adding to it with all the different tools that I try. So overall, there's my thoughts. I think that if you have coarser hair and maybe shorter hair, um, you may really like having this all-in-one tool. I would just say, again, be very careful with heat protectant. Be careful that you're actually using something that's actually rated for 450 degrees. For me, it's a no. I find that if I'm going to be spending money where I'm laying $100 bills down, I want to be really happy with what I've got 
and there's just too many things about this device for my long hair, for my silver hair, and for my fine hair that I'm just not interested in damaging my hair. I was particularly heartbroken when I saw all of the damage just one styling routine with that paddle brush did. I will have to grow that out now, so that was very unfortunate. And I feel like this might conclude my testing of hot styling paddle brushes. I really wanted one because I thought it was a really nice, simple way to smooth and kind of straighten your hair and have volume all in one. But I think they're gonna have to be a hard pass for me from now on unless I find one that has really soft bristles or is actually made really well for fine hair and has really good heat controls on it. So that's it for me today. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that I haven't scared you off of the tool, but I've given you some honest feedback about, you know, some plus and minuses for silver hair. Uh, if you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel so I can see you next time. Until then, shine on.